Welcome to the ultimate Photoshop workstation guide for 2024. Hey, I'm Craig Hume, Managing Director at Utopia Computers. We're not just any system builder, we're an award-winning team based in Scotland, passionate about crafting incredible computers for everybody's needs. For over 20 years, we've been at the forefront of computer technology, and I'm proud to say that we've been voted the UK's best system builder, not once, not twice, but five times. Yes, that's two decades of innovation, excellence, and a whole bunch of tech. Here on this channel, I share insider tips on all things tech, drawing from our rich experience in building top tier computers. I'm also gonna give you a glimpse into the lessons learned in running this successful business for all those years. If you're into tech and business insights, then hit the subscribe button. Your support means the world to me and my team and allows us to continue offering up top notch free advice. So without further ado, let's start with what is the best CPU for Photoshop? Well, this is easy. The best CPU for Photoshop in 2024 is currently Intel's i9-14900K. It wins on all benchmarks and beats the competition from AMD with a clear lead. Why is that? Photoshop has long favoured a CPU's single core ability over having multiple cores running at lower clock speeds. As I'm about to come on to, some more expensive CPUs deliver a reduction in performance when running Photoshop due to their sizeable core count. The 14900K has an astounding clock speed, which is how fast the CPU runs. When pushed, this power horse can hit up to six gigahertz. This performance brings it into its own when running Photoshop. If you do want to go for AMD for your workstation, then have a look at AMD's Ryzen 9 7950X. This chip's gonna perform about 10% slower than the aforementioned 14900K, but in real world tests is still a very strong performer. Now, the new Ryzen Threadripper 7000 CPUs, are they good for Photoshop? Well, as I covered in the last section, for most Photoshop tasks, you're better off with an Intel Core or AMD Ryzen CPU. They're gonna be about 15% quicker than the powerhouse AMD Threadripper 7000 series. But some Photoshop users out there might spend most of their time in applications that do actually need many cores, like Corona. Having 32 cores in your CPU or more is gonna slow Photoshop down, but that might be a worthy trade-off depending on your particular work workflow. The latest Threadripper 7980X does this less than the older Threadripper Pro 5955WX. But if you're using Photoshop with other apps that do have a lot of cores, then the 32 core 7970X may well be your best bet. As for the new AMD Threadripper series in general, they're about 10 to 20% faster than the old Threadripper Pro 5000WX series. However, their support for less memory and fewer PCIe lanes, which obviously isn't a big, ideal, big deal for Photoshop, and the fact that they're also 600 to about 1,000 pounds cheaper makes them a great buy for the right workflow. So, do more CPU cores make Photoshop faster? Photoshop is getting better at using multiple cores all the time, but as of today in 2024, we have found that having more than eight cores gives little to no extra performance. In fact, as we've just covered, some monster CPUs like the AMD Threadripper 7000 series with 64 cores do suffer due to their extra cores and lower clock speed. Now, does Photoshop work with better with Intel or AMD? Well, as I've said, if you're going top end, then Photoshop works great with both Intel and AMD. If you're a bit more on a budget, then stick to AMD. The Ryzen 7000 series are a hit, and they hit the sweet spot for both performance and price. Now, what about Xeon chips for Photoshop? There's an assumption made that the more expensive the processor, the better they will perform, but this is very dependent on the apps you're gonna be using. Xeon chips are not a great option for Photoshop. The extra features they bring to the table, like ECC memory support, large cache, and enterprise-grade reliability, simply don't benefit Photoshop performance, and they come at a huge financial premium. Stick to Intel's Core Series chips, or AMD's Ryzen chips, for the best performance in Photoshop. Now, how about a dual CPU setup for Photoshop? I do get asked this question from time to time about these types of systems, and to be honest, for Photoshop, as you might have guessed, no. Photoshop does not know what to do with these extra cores. A single high-speed CPU is all that's needed for the win in Photoshop. Now moving on, what is the best GPU for Photoshop? The most important aspect of choosing a GPU is to get one that is supported by Adobe. 
The good news if you're trying to save some money is that you don't have to go all out for the most expensive card. If you take a recent test of the very latest RTX 4090 from Nvidia, the RTX 4060 is actually only a few percent slower. Because of this, I'm going to recommend a mid-range Nvidia RTX card like the 4060 as the go-to graphics card for Photoshop users in 2024. Now, can I get away with onboard graphics in Photoshop? Yeah, it's going to run. But even a basic GPU is probably going to give you about twice the performance in GPU accelerated tasks. The key here is to consider what monitor you're going to be using. For 4K or multiple monitors, a GPU like the NVIDIA RTX 4060 is the perfect pairing. And that leads us on to the important question of video memory. How much VRAM, video memory, does Photoshop need? All dedicated video cards have video memory. By dedicated video card, I mean a separate card fitted to your PC to process graphic intensive tasks and display a picture on your monitor or monitors. 8GB is the sweet spot here. And since pretty much all cards now have 8GB of VRAM, you can easily run 4K and above screens as well as multiple monitor setups on a basic card. Now, you may have heard Quadro cards are good. Can you use a Quadro card for Photoshop? So let's talk about NVIDIA Quadro. These cards are top notch and they're a real game changer for professionals. They are tailor made for tasks that demand precision and power. Think things like computer aided design, professional video rendering, 3D modeling and animation, but that's not all. They're also making big waves in the exciting world of machine learning. If you're into any of these fields, the NVIDIA Quadro might be something that you'd want to check out. But in Photoshop, however, these extra value things that these cards bring to the table, well, they just do not deliver good value for money. So yes, these cards are arguably more reliable and stable, but we've found GeForce cards perfect for Photoshop and even more intensive creative applications. So while you can use a Quadro card, you don't want to invest in one unless your other applications require it. Will NVIDIA or AMD give better results in Photoshop? In recent tests, we have found little difference between NVIDIA and AMD cards of similar specs. However, we have historically always preferred NVIDIA. This comes down to their stability and the reliability of their drivers. Generally speaking, NVIDIA are just rock solid. Now, how much RAM does Photoshop need? 16 gigabyte is the sweet spot for most power users. By power users, I mean those who are using many, many layers, very large files. We're talking tens of layers with file sizes around 500 megabytes. Photoshop's gonna be able to take advantage of anything up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, but this would only be needed if you work on hugely complicated files. Think gigabytes in size. A good example of which would be someone working on, say, raw satellite images. Now hold on, top tip time. How can you tell what file sizes you're actually working on? Photoshop files have two file sizes. They're normally displayed as, say, 100 megabytes slash 180 megabytes. The left number is the flat file size if you simply export the file without compression. Well, the right number is the size of the Photoshop document with all the layers. The right number includes all these layers and is typically the most relevant when deciding how much RAM your system needs. Now, does having DDR5 RAM help performance in Photoshop? Boosting DDR5 memory frequency can modestly enhance performance for chips like the Intel i9-14900K and the aforementioned AMD Ryzen 9 7950X. Intriguingly, Testing both Intel and AMD systems with memory speeds between 5200 and 6000 megahertz delivered almost identical results, with only slight dips in performances at lower speeds. The most you can expect is around a 5% performance boost by having faster DDR5 RAM installed. It's worth saying if you're planning on building your own workstation, please be sure to check for DDR5 RAM compatibility. At the time of filming, there's still quite a few incompatibilities out there, and if you get this wrong, you may experience poor performance, or at worst, blue screen errors. So what type of storage drive should you use for Photoshop? Well, you want a solid state drive of some sort. In 2024, mechanical drives are a complete no-no. It's a one-way street to extreme frustration. While faster NVMe SSDs won't provide all that much more of a performance boost, some are available for a little more than a normal SATA SSD so they're worth the additional cost. For storage capacity, one terabyte is actually enough for most users, but at Utopia, we're seeing two and four terabyte drives become more popular as precise prices continue to fall. Now, what storage recommendation am I gonna give you? For everyday use, a single drive is gonna be just fine. But if you want a pro level setup, then it's best to think of having anything up to three drives. Yes, 
For the best performance, you need to go a little bit more than your normal setup. Your first drive will be for Windows, Photoshop, and any other applications you use, like Lightroom. If your budget allows you want an SSD or M.2 NVMe, ideally one to four terabytes in size. But your second drive is gonna be your working drive. Here you're gonna put your photos and other Photoshop files, like your projects. Mechanical, mechanical drives are okay for this, but again, if your budget allows, then go for an SSD or NVMe to ensure that super slick workflow. The size is gonna depend on your project files, but we tend to see clients choose between a two and four terabyte drive here. And finally, if you're looking for that ultimate setup, then you can install a third drive, and it's what we call a scratch disk. This drive is only gonna use for your temporary files, and again, should be an SSD or NVMe drive. Any size of SSD is gonna be fine here. A 250 gig SSD will do the job. Hold on, Craig, what if I'm on a budget and can't afford the best? Like many things in life, sometimes the best is great, but you simply have to go with what you can afford or already have. The great thing about Photoshop is, well, the specs I've given here show you how to get the ultimate performance gains from Photoshop. If your budget doesn't stretch to the specs I've listed, then work from best principles. Get the fastest CPU, RAM, storage you can afford. Buying or building a PC you can upgrade may also help if your project demands get bigger in the future. So to conclude, when building the ultimate Photoshop workstation, look for a CPU that delivers the best in single-threaded performance. A higher frequency CPU, the better. Aim for one that can hit four gigahertz or higher. If you're gonna go for a dedicated GPU, get one with eight gigabytes of VRAM or more. And for RAM, choose 16 gigabytes of RAM for home professional use, 32 gigabytes for pro use, and 64 gigabytes if you're working on files that are larger than two gigabytes with lots of layers. For storage, opt for a one terabyte or larger SSD. Look out for NVMe for a little performance boost. And a secondary drive to keep all your project files and pictures. And if you want that true Photoshop setup, then get that third drive and use it as a scratch disk. Looking to make your existing PC last a little longer? In the video linked above, I share my three go-to apps that have helped me solve PC problems easily and quickly over the years. Thanks, I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, ask below. Stay curious, stay different, hit the sub button, and I'm going to see you in the next one.